Do Mizzou's playoff hopes die this weekend? Does Georgia bounce back? Is Tennessee on upset watch? Time to get the SEC squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. Oh, yeah, we're squatting up. Welcome into the SEC squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as you get ready for another wild weekend across the SEC. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com today to get started. Welcome into the SEC squad. I'm your host, Chris Gordy, host of Locked on SEC. Joining us today, Stephen Willis, host of Locked on Ole Miss, John Neighbors, Locked on Razor backs john miller locked on mizzou chris marler locked on gamecocks eric kane locked on vols jay smith locked on sooners and spencer mclaughlin from locked on college football welcome in gents as we do each week around this time we just uh, go around a round table and ask you to make a prediction about your team this week steven Man, Ole Miss. What I, I, I have no idea. That's the reason I was watching the wild card game with the Detroit Tigers because all of a sudden, you know, that got all of my attention. They, honestly, they played like absolute garbage um, last week. They played their worst game that I've seen them play offense since Ed Orgeron was the head coach at Ole Miss. But I digress. This week against South Carolina will be the most intense environment that Ole Miss goes into, and Ole Miss all has Juice Wells to thank for that. Hey, Matt Luke had some bad offenses, too. Let's not oh, forget. Matt him. Luke, head coach, Ole Miss football, Matt Luke. <laughs> uh, Chris Marler is hands down the only person who does a Matt Luke impression, so <laughs> get that out the way. It's no an emerging market, I tell you. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, John Neighbors, God, you guys just can never win in Dallas. You're so close. I hate that game with a burning passion. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for some reason, I'm still stupid enough to go to it. But it's incredible. You know, Arkansas under Sam Pittman under the past couple of years has been like, hey, you're going to suck. Let's just suck a little bit more so that way we lose. So um, it's been uh, it's been quite the ride so far. But, uh, hey, they're at home. And luckily, they perform even worse at home than they do away from home against Tennessee. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a banner game in this one. Uh, but I'm not expecting too much. It's going to be a lot to a little. And I'll let you guys decide which team is actually going to blow out the other. Yeah, an actual night game in Fayetteville. There hasn't been many of those in recent uh, history. It feels like they've all been day games, and then you run off to Little Rock and Dallas and all these other places. Uh, John Miller, give me a uh, prediction for your team this week. Well, off the air, we were bantering a bit about the 12-team playoff and whether your season would be over, this, that, and the other, on this format and the other. Well, then Chris Cordy's going, will Missouri's season and playoff hopes die after this week? <laughs> Wait a second. Missouri, the number nine team in the country, they, they possibly lose one game and it's all over. That's my prediction. No, they will not die after this week, Chris. Hey, I didn't write it. Zach Blackerby wrote that. But, uh, oh, Zach. You, oh, yeah. You Zach know. isn't here. Cash him as the it's boogeyman, me. Gordy. Some host. <laughs> hey, but mine would be wrong team favored if I'm talking Mizzou A&M. We're going to get into that game in a little bit. Chris Marler, uh, South Carolina, they've been off for like a month. Welcome back. Uh, yeah. Give me a prediction on them this week. I'll give you two predictions. I'm going to make John Neighbors smile whether he likes it or not. Um, not off to a good start. But... I will also say this Ole Miss team under Lane Kiffin last year averaged uh, – they're, they're 12 and 8 in road games under Lane Kiffin uh, under, over the last three years, and they averaged 20 points less per game on the road last year than they did at home. So I'm with, I'm with Steven. I think this is going to be a – there's a chance that South Carolina can win one of these next three, um, possibly even two of them. So I'm excited. Yeah, I think I saw that FanDuel line was, what, it was around 10, 9.5 earlier in the week, and now it's down to 9. Some money coming in on South Carolina. People not buying Ole Miss. We'll get into that in a bit. Eric Kane, the Vols, they're coming off a little bit of a respite as well. Give me a prediction for your team. Yeah, it should be a good one. Uh, another game away from Neyland Stadium, the third in five games. Another night game, that's the fourth in five games. Uh, a lot of the same old, same old for Tennessee so far this year, but... 
Should be a good one. By week came at the right time. Got to get those offensive tackles back healthy because Oklahoma killed them. And uh, yeah, we, we'll see what happens. John is like, just disgusted. For, good at for you. who? Good yeah. for who? Yeah. What are we talking about? Like <laughs> good, good for Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, Very good bad man. for Arkansas. Yeah, that's 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 more like it. Yeah. By the way, I get crap for saying Vols. How do you say it, Eric? Vols. Yeah, it's Vols. You're, you're saying a V A W L S. Vols. They don't like that. It's Vols. Well, Whatever. It's Balls here. Balls. Balls. They don't like anything. Balls. Balls. That is true. That is yeah. true. They don't like anything. Yeah. Well, you wear orange, so uh, there's that. Uh, Jay Smith, give me your prediction color. on Oklahoma this week. Uh, luckily, we got a bye week, but I'm not sure if we're going to win it since the injury report has shown that we're still <laughs> down our top five wide receivers, two uh, running backs, a um, – uh, two offensive linemen, a linebacker, and a partridge in a pear tree. There you go. Good grief! There, there was there was casualty listed at Tatum's that was smaller than that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, life has been pretty uh, tough, but hey, you know what? We're gonna mm. make lemonade out of these lemons. Good was that a was that a Civil War reference, Stephen? What war was yeah. that? Yes, yeah, there was Civil War. Come on, on Gordy, brush up on your American history. history. It was one of the most <laughs> famous battles of the Civil War. Yeah, I was told. Y'all that. hear about this war? <laughs> uh spencer i know you don't have a team but you got a prediction on any of the sec teams this don't week start talking I, like i'm i'm guys. not as down on arkansas as john neighbors is up there. Doing, he's not he's not yeah, liking the like he's not liking the hogs and i mean I, I don't think they're pulling an upset this week i just i see that 13 and a half number and i'd say oh, I'm at home night game this is what this feels like one of those college football games where you expect it to go a certain way and you're like okay on paper x y and z are going to happen and it's going to line up just like this and tennessee will get their ducks in a row and blow them out and then you look up in the fourth quarter and you're like why is it only 24 to 17 and arkansas has the ball and then Taylor green will throw a pick six or something of that nature and then they'll go down kick a meaningless field goal and and cover and that's sort of college football game that i as a sicko am here for all right, before we turn the page and get into next week's games, uh, look back real quick. We don't have our Georgia or Alabama hosts on this week. But give, me a, give me a thought. Anybody got a reaction to that game? And uh, look, I'm I'm fully in the Georgia's not dead category, but I've seen some people saying this thing could spiral for Kirby. Tough schedule still remaining. Yeah, that's like the police. Is going to be huge. It's going to be absolutely massive since they lost that game to Alabama. Now, by the way, did y'all hear that Ryan Williams is 17 years old? That is I, I want to call the police news here on, on, I didn't on attacking know minors wow. like Ryan Williams. Is, is he just is an absolute psychopath. And the fact that the eye black, the the everything, the dirty bird he pulled in the end zone. But here's the thing. He pulled the dirty bird. How does he know about the dirty bird? That was He's dirty 17. Bird. Yeah, I think um, the, the thing for me is if you're Kirby Smart and you sat here and, and you were a Georgia fan talking about, well, it's not a Bama problem, it's a Saban problem. He's 1-5 against against Saban, not Bama. You have an entire offseason where you know you were three points away from three-peating a year ago. You go into Tuscaloosa with a chance to show who daddy is and be the new king of the SEC. And what do you do? Off a of bye week, you go down 28 to nothing. It is the same blank a different day from Kirby Smart, and I love it. Alabama winning that game is huge for Alabama, but let's not overlook the fact that they almost gave up a 30-point lead at home. Yeah, No, let's overlook it. Uh, Steven, I was in a, in a much better place emotionally than before you said that. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I've heard some people say, look, huge win for Kalen DeBoer, but mm -hmm. also, ooh, are you going to do this with teams in the future? Like, put your foot on their throat and put them away. I, yeah. I've, I've seen Nick Saban so, blow a multi-touchdown lead at home before. I, I think Kalen DeBoer will be all right. I would like to say that Steven Willis's jersey is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. That's a baseball team worth celebrating, and I don't think that our <laughs> host of this wonderful segment has such a thing. Wait, when but did Saban blow a, a double-digit lead at home? Auburn, Cam that. Newton, 2010. Oh, that was tough. Yeah, that oh, was okay. one. But hey, I kind of want to... I know that, I know that we're, we're all jokes aside of Ryan Williams being 17 years old, but still, I'm trying to understand... First and foremost, how the hell does he know about the Dirty Bird? Yeah. Secondly, did you all see that he changed his profile picture to Michael Vick holding a dog? Yeah, like, that is real. elite trolling, right? That, that is a level real, yeah. of psychopath that mm -hmm. I did not expect, and now I'm terrified of playing him on the it's field. It's also a bad omen because Vick spiraled after that. and uh, yeah, had yeah, some It was not a real experience. thing that happened. My main question is, I don't know how everyone, how old everyone is on this this show. I know Steve, or Spencer is like 12. But I will say that, like, he is. All, all I could see when he caught that ball was all I could think about was every muscle in my back would have been pulled and legs. And, like, yeah. like every, it, was, it was tough to watch.
I that pulled a muscle like, laughing. That looked like Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. You know, yeah. The thing is, as yeah. great as Ryan Williams is, those catches that he made, as fun as they were, it's sort of to the point of Alabama's offense, which is, man, they are just so high variance. They're really, really yeah. high level, high mm -hmm. ceiling. But at the same time, they went through a long stretch of that game where they didn't score. How about not running any clock? Like, sure. what, was, what was DeBoer doing but not running any clock? Well, that's not him and DeBoer's M.O. is M.O. if you watch the last three years, including this one in Alabama, is very clearly they work on one th I think Alabama yeah. works on one thing at practice now with DeBoer at the helm. Throw it down the field, execute 50-50 yeah. balls. I think it's the only thing they do. You look at Washington's highlight reels the last two years, that's all it is. It's just Penix chucking it down the field and great wide receivers go make plays, and yeah. he's got a great wide receiver and a really good quarterback. There, there are several things that are concerning it. Like just if you're being honest and objective watching the, the the tape itself is like there's a couple of plays, especially late, the Justice Haynes one late in the in the game too, where it's like just get north and south and get a first down, keep the drive going. Like, like yep. what are some of these players players doing? But anyway, that's that was my take. All right, hey, they, got, they got Diego football this week. Yeah, well, speaking of, let's turn the page and look at uh, SEC Week 6 coming up. Marlon Spencer have to bail, but we're going to dive deeper into I'll Mizzou A&M, the SEC squad, talking more ball next. Hey, more with the squad in just a second, but I want to remind you guys today's episode is presented to you by our friends at FanDuel. And look, if you're a college fan, an NFL fan, you can start the season with a big return over at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. It's super easy to do. They got plenty of great games up there right now. I'm just looking at FanDuel and some of the SEC games this weekend. You can get Texas A&M minus one and a half against Mizzou. You can get Auburn plus 24 and a half at Georgia. You can get Ole Miss minus nine at South Carolina. These are all lines up there right there at FanDuel.com. Head to their website today. Get signed up. If you've never signed up before, take advantage of those $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your $5 bet. Download the FanDuel app. Sign up on the website. That's FanDuel.com. Roll along here. The SEC squad oh, continues on. We welcome in a, uh, a new guest, our buddy Brandon Olson, host of Locked on Gators, joining us. And Brandon, perfect timing, man. We're going to get to the uh, the Florida the Florida Gators here in just a bit, but welcome in. I I don't think I'm welcome here. I joined and I saw everybody just go. Oh God, this John guy. walked off. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brandon, we, we, we share apparently a head coach, so it's fine. Yeah, we hey. share a hair, uh, we share a head coach. None of our coaches can beat Kentucky. It's just <laughs> Mark Stoops is inevitable. Yeah, the Elon, pits, Elon, heads are falling off. Yeah, Dion exposed UCF last week, Brandon. We're going to get to your game in a little bit. Y'all might win that one. You got a chance. Let's get into uh, what's kind of considered the premier game of the SEC this week. It is Missouri at A&M. It's ranked on rank. It's number nine Mizzou at number 25 A&M. And the Aggies have been sitting here as a home favorite just about all week. The disrespect. John Miller, I know Eli Drinkwitz is enjoying being the underdog. He likes this. He doesn't want to be the road favorite. I think you're right. I think this does play well for the old uh, something to prove card, the disrespect card for Missouri for sure. But overall, just looking at it, I don't want to get too complicated here. I think this is going to be a game that's a little bit maybe lower scoring than people think. That Texas A&M defensive front is for real. Nick Scorton's a really, really good mm -hmm. player. The Stewart kid for A&M made a huge play in that game. Really, those two guys kind of made the game for him against the Hogs, I thought, against Arkansas. But to me, if it's real simple. Missouri, fifth year with their coach. They're further along. This is Mike Elko's first year. And whatever you say about Brady Cook, I think he's a better player than Marcel Reed, who I expect to start right now. So better coach, better quarterback. Give me the Tigers. John Neighbors, your team saw the Aggies up close last week. Is this a, is this a team that Mizzou should beat? Sure. I, I mean, listen, it, it's it's a... Like it doesn't matter because Arkansas always loses that game. So it's not really a good barometer to say exactly how good Texas A&M is. Texas A&M is not a good football team. It's just Arkansas is worse. So it's a, uh, it's a game that I think A&M, honestly, any game that they have the rest of the year, I, I would probably lean towards the opponent. Their defensive front's really good. Uh, but, you know, offensively, their wide receivers aren't great. Uh, Marcel Reed's fine, but he's not exactly taking any risk downfield or anything like that. 
So uh, they're really boring. It's like Texas A&M basketball. It's like they kind of successful, but they're really just boring to watch. So, yeah, to say that's the premier game of the SEC just blew all of credibility I had for the SEC. If that's the premier game this week, God well, almighty. Well, it's, it's a rough week, it's, John, all right? Well, 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 what's your favorite game then, John? Uh, whatever's not in the SEC, if that's the case. Like, oh. I'll, I'll watch high school games, <laughs> something like that. I will bring up while we're on this this A and M game. Um, it's like the fifth straight week that Connor Wigman is listed as a game time decision. I'm, I mean, I'm not expecting him to play. I'm sure it'll be yeah, Marcus Reed either. again. But the most impressive stat with the Zaggy team: 13th in the country in rushing offense. They have yeah, Levy and Moss. They have found a way to run the football. Nope, doesn't. Connor count. Wegman, by the way, is just becoming the street cred. Cam Rising. They played the Florida Gators. It does not count. <laughs> We gave up 240 rushing yards to Mississippi State. It does not count. Okay, Brandon, but they've ran the ball against everyone else, so you're not unique. Doesn't count. Excuse you. How dare you not? How dare you say I'm not unique? The ball. (laughs) Anyone like – raise your hand if you're taking Mizzou in this one. Okay. A&M is 10 and 13. A&M is 10 and 13 straight up in games where they've been a home favorite uh, over the last five seasons. So you saw it happen against a team earlier in this year against Notre Dame. And then Notre Dame, obviously, they promptly get beat by Northern Illinois. The other thing is, too, John, back me up on this, even though you're really mean about this great shirt that I got from Belk. Um, Mizzou's coming off a bye, right? That's absolutely true. Yeah, okay. Usually just like the same shirt in my style, I, I think I was spot on. But anyway, I mean, it's, I think that's a big deal. I think that's a, that's a big deal coming in, and even though it's a, a road game. And it's also one of the only few games that Mizzou's an under underdog in, too. Yeah, it's um, – I, I don't know. I, I keep going back and forth on this one. There's a reason the line's only two. We will uh, mm-hmm. we'll see as we get closer to Saturday. But, look, you know, the NCAA video game named Kyle Field one of the toughest places to play in all college football. And then they backed off of it. So yeah, you know. very quickly. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think Matt Luke had a winning record in Cal Field. You want Matt Luke? <laughs> Gary Pinkle did. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's not an easy place to play. How about the other one? Where I'm looking at spreads and just like the closest other closest spread this week in the conference. It's Ole Miss minus nine, Stephen, at South Carolina. Nine. This is an offense that was averaging what, like 50 points a game prior to last week. Yeah, their game plan was head scratching last week against Kentucky. That that's the best way you can put that. Their offense basically threw every pass over 20 yards downfield. They ran the ball three times in the first half and they dug a hole for themselves. They basically allowed Mark Stoops to play the game that he wanted to play and once he got his fingers in that game, it was no getting out of it. It's the typical Mark Stoops type game and because of that it came down to a weird fourth and seven that they just basically did a duck and chuck and caught the ball. And then they fumbled the ball into the end zone and Kentucky recovered it and Kentucky won the game. Rah, rah. And all the Ole Miss fans are ticked off about it. And all the Kentucky fans are in my comment sections talking about how amazing they are. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, there was more fluky things that happened in that game than did. Um, yeah, it feels so like, like, they, I think it feels like Mark Stoops has some. Somebody with a pulse. Well, that right? and it feels like Mark Stoops has like something over Ole Miss, like they owe him dead or something in order for them to pull that out. Because that was ridiculous. The the game plan literally was perfect for Mark Stoops in the way mm -hmm. that they play ball at Kentucky. Well, Stevens, right, you can't let him get into that game plan. I mean, it's not very often Kentucky's able to get rolling offensively, but rolling for Kentucky is running the football, eating up clock, playing keep away. I mean, Steven, didn't Kentucky run like 20 more Offensive plays than than almost in the something game. like that. They they had nearly forty minutes of time of possession. It was really close to yeah. that Tennessee and, game a couple of years ago. And the Wildcats yeah. are no juggernaut offensively, but if yeah. you play keep away and you play good defense, you can win some games like that. And that's yeah. a big reason why they won. Ole, Ole Miss had four penalties defensively, pass interference, or holding that kept drives alive. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. Ole Miss gets up, a, if Ole Miss happens to game. get up two possessions in that game, say it's fourteen to nothing, Rebels. Yeah. So, excuse me. Yeah. No, I I actually messed that up. I was thinking about last week. Totally ignore what I just said, everybody. <laughs> well, I look, I was just going to say that. Oh, uh, Kentucky, does, Kentucky does a nice little thing that I say: never argue with an idiot because they'll drag you down to their level, beat you with experience. That's Kentucky. They're like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna drag it down. Play. They're they're Pittsburgh Steelers of the SEC. That's all they are. Mark Mark Stoops went to Iowa. Well, yeah. all yeah. I heard all I heard from Stephen was sour grapes. Marler, give me uh, give me a thought on South Carolina. They get Rocket Sanders back. Can they keep this one close? <laughs> yeah, you get Lenore Sellers back too. And even if he's injured, you got to feel better about the game planning uh, with with what Robbie Ashford can do after it was Akron, but still. 
you, they just – Dow Loggins completely went away from the game plan against LSU after he, after Sellers went down. They threw the ball four times in the second half. So um, I think that's a lot on Loggins more than anything. But, I, yeah, I think – uh, sorry, Beamer coming off a bye. They're 2-1. and one. They're only lost last year in that, that weird game against Florida where they lost by two points. Like, uh, And, again, Ole Miss on the road last year especially, they struggled to put up points. So – I don't know who that loss to Kentucky helps more if it's Ole Miss for motivation or, or for South Carolina in terms of game planning, but I feel like it helps both sides either way. Last year um, against Alabama, ignore the number on the side of the – but sides of the name, um, but Ole Miss's offense had a game real similar to this against Alabama. The next week's against LSU, they had them about ready to quit in the fourth quarter. Right. So I do think the offense is going to get fit. There is a, there is a historical thing that you can look back at for that. Yeah, and, and I thought uh, Kiffin uh, lighting up, uh, or I said gaslighting the Kentucky defense all last week. I think he was being honest. I think they really were. Uh, that's yeah. a really good defense for Kentucky. They, they are legitimately a good defense. They really are. One more here before we uh, turn the page. Brandon, give you a little chance to talk about your game against UCF. I thought everybody had this one as a UCF guaranteed win, but they looked terrible against Colorado last week. So you guys might have a chance. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna keep it a beat, Mitch Gordy. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, UCF got got held by Colorado. They can still run the football, and I don't know if you heard me earlier, but Mississippi State ran for 240 on the Florida Gators. Something tells me that R.J. Harvey, K.J. Jefferson, who, by the way, uh, neighbors, a lot, lot, of, lot of former Razorbacks you're talking about today. That's, yeah, it's that's amazing really, how that works out. Very, very interesting thing, <laughs> and they're all better now. That's crazy. Uh, but he won and won last year, and so he's done that. He's got that experience. Penny Boone went to my school, Toledo, so that just tells me he's about to have a three-touchdown game because that's the right kind of pain that I need as a Florida Gators fan right now. Um, yeah, I, I still think UCF's going to win this game. My whole thing has been all season. If you can run the ball effectively and creatively, you're going to beat Florida. I have no reason to expect anything else at this point. UCF is a three-point favorite. Real quick, show of hands. Anybody going to take Florida at home against UCF? All right. Me, neighbors. Okay, about four of us. Five. Okay, Kane jumps in. Uh, what about the other one? Anybody think the Gamecocks can pull off the upset of Ole Miss? All right, Chris Marler, John Neighbors. Oh, and Jay Smith. All right, we got there we three. Go, Jay. Three. I thought you were Eric Kane only picked Florida to beat UCF so that he can kind of talk up Florida a little bit just so they can rush them at Neyland. I get it. I'm familiar with your game. De depends the on the way, quarterback, man. You, you yeah. play the you play DJ, they're, he's going to get Tennessee. You play Graham Mertz, ten, Tennessee that will be okay. It doesn't matter because they're going to be coached by Billy Napier. That's <laughs> true. Well, <laughs> way, Tennessee will run the football game, on Florida. So yeah. yeah, the Ole Miss-South Carolina game has a chance to be what the Ole Miss-Tennessee game was in 2021, the mustard <laughs> game, because that place is going to be a cauldron. If my comments are any indication – they are mm. all pissed at Juice Wells. Well, yeah, well, when you quit on a team and fake an injury for the most part of the season, I think that, that that's exactly. why. Exactly. So. I wouldn't want to play for the guy that's went two against Billy Napier either, so I get it. Yeah, well, I anyone, except awareness here. <laughs> will anyone throw a golf ball at a coach this week? Who's on upset alert? We'll talk about that coming up next. All right, final segment of the SEC squad here. And guys, we've been hitting on uh, all the games this week. I kind of like all these teams getting bye weeks. We've only got like five or six games to talk about. we got 16 teams in the conference now. It's kind of nice to have uh, a smaller slate that we could focus on. But 630 Central on ABC, it is going to be number four Tennessee at three and two Arkansas. Much improved Arkansas team. I thought this spread was going to be like 20. When, when I first saw the game. And then it's been sitting at about 13 half, so just under two touchdowns. Um, let's start with Eric Kane. Eric, give me your Tennessee perspective. Are you worried about the Hawks? No, no I'm not worried. Um, I do think it'll be louder. It'll be a bit, no disrespect, because it wasn't quiet at all. But, I mean, it's going to be much louder than what it was at Oklahoma. So, you know, how does Nico, a young quarterback, kind of operate in that, in that situation? But um, I, I do think that the quarterback, Taylor Green, you know, if, He's going to make some plays. Tennessee struggled with running quarterbacks in years past. Uh, he's mobile. It can extend. Um, 
but he also gives the football to the other team a lot. And I think that Tennessee's got a great opportunity to take advantage of that and, and make him, you know, force him into some bad decisions and all that. But um, I'm not worried. I do recognize, I think that, and I've said this every single week, and it's kind of a, uh, you know, kind of discrediting Tennessee's schedule, but this will be the best quarterback, I think, Tennessee's seen. Grayson McCall was not it. Jackson Arnold was benched in the second quarter. Kent State and UTC aren't in this conversation. Um, Taylor Green's got some abilities. They're in the SEC in passing, but again, I go back to he throws the football to the other team and turns it over. So I think Tennessee will, with that defensive front seven, will take advantage of that. So worried, no, but do you understand you can't walk in there and sleepwalk because Arkansas mm-hmm. gets you if you do that. I mean, this is SEC football you're playing on the road. John, a lot of eye rolls. Uh, Jaquindon Jackson uh, got bottled up last week, but still leads the SEC in rushing. I would think that's the recipe for success, right? I mean, you would think. I just love how Eric was like, "Is like, oh, well, Arkansas will get you." They haven't gotten anybody. It's like, so hey, what does that that's mean? That's not true. In 2022, you? they got Lane Kiffin. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 2022, yeah. two years yeah. ago. Like, I mean, <laughs> come on. Like this idea of like, yeah, well, no, Arkansas, they're a sneaky good team. No, again, it goes back to the whole thing. They can play up to the competition. They'll play down to the competition. They'll have a double up the yardage of like an Oklahoma State. They'll be able to actually win the turnover battle like they have in other games too, but it doesn't matter because they're going to sit there and they're going to look at you and going to be like, hey, hey, we're going to be stupid today and we're going to try to turn the ball over. We're going to have a lot of penalties and we're going to make dumb decisions. Do we want to kick the field goal? No, let's take a timeout and let's go for a fake field goal, even though we went for a fake punt and it didn't work out. So then it ends up just being a disaster and you have these little small decisions that end up being the difference in this game. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have Arkansas that's going to have the game close. Maybe and they get up early and then they're going to do stupid stuff like either a scoop and score or a pick six or a safety or maybe a meteor goes into the stadium and somehow just <laughs> destroys everybody. And then it's going to be like, oh, OK, well, that's all right. Here, Tennessee, we're going to give the game to you, even though we're playing our A game. We're going to do things to make sure that you win because we are not a serious football program right now. We love to do just enough to lose the almost champions of the world. Hang the banner for them. That's exactly how this game is going to go. Hammer the balls because they're going to pull away in the fourth quarter and it's not going to be close. The Bizarro John, Kansas hug? City Chiefs. They John, barely even hug? lose every time. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't want hug, hugs. I hate all of you. Like, I don't, I, like, I don't. But I want to give you a hug because that yeah. was amazing. I loved what, it. What, that yeah, was, I enjoyed that. Wow. What are, so what is the storyline at Arkansas right now besides John Calipari? I mean, what is the what are they saying about the football program? Uh, they, hey, can, can I answer that for, from an outsider? Just oh, please! Know. For all that is holy, I would love to hear this answer. Eric. It, it sounds like Sam Pittman doesn't believe in his quarterback whatsoever. It sounds like Sam Pittman is very not confident in his football team, just based mm-hmm. on comments from his presser this week. By the way, love a coach that's open and honest about things. I wouldn't know what that's about. Um, but it, some of the comments in his press conferences this week kind of seem how like he doesn't really. He's like, yeah, Taylor Green's not playing really confident. He'll get there eventually. Hope so. You know, it's like, Ugh, you want to say that in front of a microphone? Is that kind of right? Well, yes. Hugh, Freeze, Hugh Freeze does it every week, right? He throws his yeah, own yeah. under the bus. Yeah. No, Sam Pittman is like, if I had a nickel for every time everyone said, you know, I like Sam Pittman, but, you know, because <laughs> the, he doesn't he doesn't get the job done and win. He, he is an honest coach. And sometimes we've talked about this uh, on Locked on Razorbacks. It's like he is almost too honest by a fault and when it he says things that you shouldn't say like last year when Arkansas lost my brothers in Christ a game seven to three at home to Mississippi State he was lining up for a field goal got a delay a game penalty after the game in the press conference he was like I didn't know what to do I didn't know what to do I don't want to hear that from my head coach nobody needs to hear that from the head coach and so that's the thing is he's way too honest about things and I, I appreciate it but I don't want to hear it no I don't I don't want the labor pains just give me the baby I, I just I want to skip to all that nonsense and actually just see the results of this game because every single time it's always like, well, we we need to work on this. It's like a bucket that keeps having holes blown out that keeps having a leak. You crack you crack one hole over and you cover it up, but then boom, another one comes out on the other end. It's like every single time they have something else going wrong, and it wouldn't surprise me if this game is scores total of 150 points for all I know. But either way, the only big constant in this whole thing. Is that Arkansas is going to lose? So what you're saying is Hogs not by 90 this week? No, I, yeah, I'm saying Hogs by 90 is in 90 degrees because that's about as like as much as it's going to be there in favor. After, that's about nice Looney Tunes cartoon happen. right here. After, after that inspirational oh, no. speech, raise your hand if you're taking Arkansas this week to beat Tennessee. Nobody. I'm I'm going to raise my hand just to ask a question to John. Um, can you text me your email? I'm about to sign you up for BetterHelp because you yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a lot, something a lot heavier than use better promo help, code. I can tell you that. 
Yeah, you yeah. use our promo code. Uh, our you know, we, we can we can help you. We're here for you. Yeah, here. yeah. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be hopeful when you're an Arkansas Razorback fan. Trust me, I've been, I've, been, I've been dealing in this seventh circle of hell for literally years. It's been great. <laughs> Two other games, real quick. Just want to touch on uh, Alabama. They're number one now. They go on the road to Vanderbilt. This is a better Vanderbilt team, but. Uh, Bama by 23. I mean, is, can Vandy hang around at all? You guys have seen Diego Pavi. He's played pretty well this year. I think there's a chance Vandy playing at home and Alabama being sleepy that they cover. I don't think they get close enough to threaten them for real, but they can cover a 23-point line. Yeah, I agree, I agree even here. I, I think this is that. where I think this is where Bama does maybe miss Nick Saban a little bit, the old 70-year-old taskmaster, the guy who's seen everything. You know, this is the type of sleepy game, classic letdown potential here. I'm with yeah. you guys. I think Vanderbilt covers. I, I don't think they win. And yeah. running quarterbacks have given Bama problems, right? Mm -hmm. He's given problems for years, and, and with Kalen DeBoer even being new, I understand that he decided to put rat traps around the entire facility to make people think about the rat poison statement that Saban always says, but at the same time, coming off such an emotional game where you almost gave up your win, this is the perfect opportunity for a letdown. I don't think Vanderbilt wins, but I do see it as an opportunity to cover the spread. And, and so, Vandy Lewis, how do you feel about the rat poison uh, comment? How do you feel about the rat poison comment? Because, you know, you were tweeting it. Lane was tweeting it. Oh, Prince Lane Lee got it from the same it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's his thing. Of course, he uses it where he says, hey, don't do that. But he's retweeting it so everybody can see it. So yeah. he's kind of rat poisoning himself. The oh, last game, God. last game, guys, and I wish Zach Blackerby was here with us. It's two and three Auburn with turnover prone Peyton Thorne. And they're going to Georgia. And Georgia is angry after last week. That line is 24. It doesn't feel like enough, guys. Yeah, this one feels like Auburn's definitely not going to cover this spread. George, like you said, Georgia's pretty pissed off. And I love that Peyton Thorne was did in an interview and said that 10 out of 10 times he would do the exact same thing he did with that pick six. Like, I, I guess the self-awareness piece isn't there because to me, that's – Probably not what you want to do. To me, you call a timeout, bring your running back who was rushing for 5.7 yards per carry and give him the ball in third and four. What yeah. sense does it make for you to throw the ball and go five wide out against a defense that you know is probably going to do something to bait the guy that's infamous for giving the ball up? Why would you put why would you put the fate of your team in Thorne's uh -huh. hand? Yeah. Yeah. And defense for Peyton Thorne, teams take on the personality of their head coach. Uh, see that? Yeah, I, I would just like to say uh, Zach Blackerby may not be here, but I'm sure his listeners are. Um, your program sucks, and so do you. Yeah, I can say that. Trash recognizes trash. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> listen. I'm just gonna say there's some there's some sort of epidemic going on in there in Auburn where they're just like you know uh, saying ten out of ten times they like, I'll make that play, and then you got Hugh Freeze back. Like, ah, no respect, to, disrespect to Sam Pittman. I like the yeah. guy, but uh, you know, nine out of nine times we play that game, we win. All right, well, he's probably going to say the same crap. You know, he's going to be like, oh, you know, if they lose to Georgia B, like, hey, you know, hey, four Shane. out of four times, we'll probably win that game. Hey, it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's moronic. Okay. Screw Auburn. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm getting. I don't know. That felt like a moment where that was appropriate. That's what I'm getting for no. Auburn. <laughs> this, this, this is the T's and P's game. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's going to be ugly. And by the way, Jay Smith, Perfect thank you for, for your research. Uh, there was an upset. There has been an upset each and every week in the SEC. So, look, there's going to be one this week. We'll see. Will it be Eric Kane's Vols? Will it be uh, Stephen Willis's Rebels again? Uh, will it be John Miller? I mean, I guess y'all are underdogs, but uh, to me, it'd be I think upset. Missouri. I think yeah, that's the one. Top 10 team, right? Easiest schedule ever existed. We'll Sorry, take John. It. We're, we're all we're all betting against you. Sorry. Apologies. That's going to do it for this edition of the SEC squad. Thank you guys for making us your first uh, listen every day. Follow and subscribe to your favorite SEC uh, program here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We'll be covering your favorite team every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I'll have you covered the entire conference each and every day with Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day.